All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna dress up the outside. New bumper on the front, fourth gen, which is not gonna fit at all, but we'll make it fit. And we're gonna put a GM step bumper on the back because somebody else did it and it looked pretty good, so we're gonna do it. And then the mirrors are a problem because they're old and shiny. They don't match the truck that much. So we're gonna put some nice Boost Auto mirrors on it because we're definitely gonna tow with this truck, so we need some tow mirrors. Yeah, enough talking, let's get into it. Here we go. Now, I don't think anybody's excited about a 30-year-old second-gen gas two-wheel drive truck as I am. First come and swap into a Dodge. Because if we can make this truck good, we can do it with any truck, right? I feel like we did a pretty good job on it. <laughs> Definitely SEMA-worthy. 1060 horse, which is what the original 5.9s were. I never have to worry about the steering on this thing again, which is good because we're going to be replacing that center diff there. These are a second gen mirror with a fourth gen style of mirror. I think it's pretty well like a direct bolt on. It does fit really, really nice. All right, so we upgraded our springs and our four links. Um, now it's time to upgrade the steering as well. Now you can see the difference between these bars. Um, the geometry is different and the bar is just substantially heavier, much better tie rod ends. Uh, we got boots that come with it that are much better than these that just wear out. And the issue is that after a while, every little part starts to just wear a little bit and then you're chasing your tail. So this shock is all done. There's nothing left with this. So if we need it, we'll put it in afterwards. But basically we're gonna measure what the distance is from your tie rod end to tie rod end, match it with the new one and then we can drop it in and connect it to the steering box. So here we go. Because here it is, all on there. And man, these things are so beefy from Synergy, I never have to worry about the steering on this thing again, which is good because we're gonna be replacing that center diff there and making our own axles fit an electric motor. So they've got the heavy boots on there, so never have to worry about your uh, boots getting full of mud. And then the nut on the end there, that allows you to um, adjust your toe and, and your tie rod ends on the fly. So your alignment guy is going to love it. They're so beefy and strong. Um, they do add a bit of weight, but because we are messing with the steering afterwards, just because we're replacing that diff, um, we have to start with something really, really good. So on top of that, we've got a brace uh, behind the sway bar that actually stiffens up the steering box. So that's the pivot on the steering box. And I messed up because I accidentally misplaced my crappy steering box in the scrap bin and I needed that drag link because it's different between the two wheel drive and four wheel drive. I called Ontario Truck Rebuilds who sent me to his tow guy and I forget his name and I feel terrible now, but he owns a towing company. He gave me his steering box off of uh, an old truck. We'll see if it lasts or if I gotta rebuild that. I have to keep hurrying because this truck has to go to the dyno now. Because of that, uh, we're not gonna replace the track bar just yet but we will um i want to see how this thing drives and then we'll throw the track bar on it but i think we'll do that after we remove everything so we get a full video on it because it's universal between a couple different generations from synergy so it's got a, a bracket that uh, has to be put on and i think we're going to do a specific video on that but um i'm so happy and so confident in this suspension now i'm excited to drive this so if you need um anything for any of the generations check out synergy um really really good stuff but i gotta keep moving so let's get some bumpers on here we go Okay, let's see if a transfer truck rim can make a Dodge Ram move. Oh, tape fell down on the headliner. It's terrible. All right, let's see if that clutch does anything. Oh. Oh, of course the battery's dead. Of course it is. Let's 
see if I can get it in gear. I can get it in gear. Let's see if it'll move. Okay, so driving this truck just around the yard here. No funny noises, it's all good. I think we're good for the dyno. I still gotta put the bumpers on and the mirrors. But um, it smells exactly like the Philippines. It takes you right back. All those little diesels, they all kind of smell the same. Pretty neat. It sounds different and it, yeah. Um, nostalgia, it takes you right back. But anyway, I'll throw some mirrors on. The mirrors are super simple and they're beautiful. Fancy, they got all sorts of lights and turn signals and stuff. The problem is, None of that works because um, we uh, do not have the can bus that we need for this thing. So we're just gonna mount them so we can see because big mirrors are very important after you do all that nice work on a nice paint job and then uh, bang into something because you didn't see. So uh, that's a big problem with the F-350 too is those stupid mirrors. We gotta get better mirrors because it sucks pulling when you can't see behind you. So we'll throw those on and then we'll see what is involved with all these bumpers. Here we go. All right, check these guys out. Boost Auto out of Chicago, Illinois. These are a second gen mirror with a fourth gen style of mirror. Um, now typically they'll just ship them out with a second gen wiring harness. But Boost Auto, we told them what we're putting it in, saying, hey, we don't keep things kind of stock. So they sent us with the fourth gen wiring harness. So we'll be able to hook them up, plug and play, make it nice and easy for us when we're ready to hook these up. We don't have the wiring done yet because we still need to do the interior in this and get all the wiring harnesses. And we got these with the smoked corner lens here. So what they do, they switch back and forth between the amber and the white color. Really neat design. So these guys power fold in and they're also the tip up style. You click it in and like that is solid. Heated uppers, got to get them down again. So you got to give a little bit of force, but I mean, it's worth it to uh, have it nice and solid like that. Uh, so these cab lights, I believe these ones are going to be the sequential ones and also with the uh, switch back with, between the two colors, but they look black. They ma match our black paint like perfectly. Yeah, these are going to look really sharp. Can't wait to get these on as well. If you get a chance, go to Boost Auto, check out what they got there. Uh, they also make power running boards, whole bunch of uh, neat accessories for your truck. So go check out Boost Auto. Now, I have no idea how this is gonna go, but we do like the look of the newer bumper on the F-350. So Aaron's like, here, somebody else did it. I bet you could do it too. So here we go. Okay. <laughs> Probably just start by putting all my tools back. Ooh, I like that. Yes. I don't know, don't know where this is made, but Tong Yang built it. Okay, so we got the new bumper, we got the old bumper, and we have the brackets there that just bolt on to here. Uh, very straightforward, very simple. So I just need to move those brackets over to the same spacing onto this bracket. And then that should be it. I don't think it's rocket science. I think those are probably not needed. Oh, look at that. That goes there. And then that is kind of like that bracket. Nice. Not bad for no instructions. I think I kind of got it. Sweet. Okay, so the back bumper is pretty straightforward and not. 
The frame is way wider on a new GM, but if you take the left bracket and put it on the right side and the right bracket on the left side, I'm going to have to get a space there to line up these holes, this hole from here to there, um, because that's your step. But then um, if I cut this off and then weld this bracket in the right height and the right depth tomorrow morning in the right spot, it'll bolt right on. It'll slide right in there like it was meant to be there. So we're going to unbolt these. I'm just going to soak them in some penetrating fluid tonight. And uh, I will tackle this in the morning. Easy peasy. Here we go. Okay, so here's what I found worked best. Um, I put the thing on forks. I shimmed up my forklift to get the level right. You can also deflate one of your tires. Um, but supporting the bumper exactly where you want it to be is the best way to do it. I thought about measuring, but the angles are kind of all over the place. And this bumper is extremely tinny, which is nice because it's light. It only weighs like three pounds compared to the uh, 20 that that one weighed. That means that you can change way too much of it. Uh, the measurements are never going to be the same because um, the bumper is not the same. You can actually see that the, the plastic kind of curls. Uh, it's not even underneath the tailgate either. Um, and we got to go up a hair more on this one. I shimmed it with some cardboard in between the, the truck. So, so that's my spacing. And that spacing looks better, even though it's kind of wavy. You see that? And then I just took the brackets and I, I had to shim this one out, two washers, and then the bracket is still on the right side of uh, the right bracket is still on the right side of the truck. The thing is, I still have to shim just a touch in between this bracket and this bracket. Then I just cut the top of the GM bracket off, and I'm just going to tack it here here and here and then i'll make a plate that fills up this gap and fills up this gap i should be able to with this with the spacers still be able to knock out those two bolts they should fit inside this little frame there and it'll be tricky i might have to cut a hole in here so that i can push it back in again or notch that after we'll worry that's future riches problem so i'm just going to tack it again on here here and here and then i'll fill in the plate on the bench and weld that up proper afterwards and uh, that's basically it. It does fit really, really nice. Take these screws out so you don't uh, scratch your paint. When you're done, the bracket will look something like this. Um, just the, the one C channel welded into the other one. So let that cool, splash some paint on it, put it on there. We got a nice new custom bracket. Now we've got GM bumper tucked in really nice to a Dodge box. Okay, so measuring that bumper to this bumper, the distance it's pretty well the same. You got a little bit of room to, to slide these back and forth. The distance from the holes to the top of the bumper is pretty close too. So I think it's pretty well like a direct bolt on. See? right here on the bottom and we can do one of two things we can put a little lip in the back that just kind of curls around and keeps that stainless look going or we can build our grill to come down a little bit um, to meet the bumper um, because this is going to be a custom it's going to say Edison there and light up and stuff yeah we'll worry about that later the whole truck's going to be blown apart again anyway so we'll worry about better fitment and little things like that later but something to keep in mind when we get the guy to um, design a grill for us We'll put the balance on it, and then I uh, think we're ready for the dyno. Nice, here we go.
so you can't tell me that that isn't a sexy looking truck. I think that front bumper looks mint. There's like zero effort to put a 4th gen bumper on. And you can pick these up pretty reasonably. Undercoat the inside, paint the inside, and uh, it's not a big deal. The back bumper took me about two, three hours because the bracket, you gotta change the width and, and it's a little bit tricky in the back. I think it looks fantastic. But we're not done with this truck. The interior is getting completely redone uh, with a 4th gen chocolate brown leather interior. We're gonna redo all the seats, redo the interior of that, and then that will house all of our um, hybrid setup on it. If you haven't been following the channel, this is going to be North America's first diesel electric hybrid truck. So it has a 2.8 Cummins in it, which uh, right now is in front of the manual transmission, so we could do a bunch of emission testing on it before this engine powers a generator that charges batteries between the frame rails and two electric axles for that instant torque. You get the benefits of electric, but never having to worry about charging by the side of the road or waiting for it to charge because you got your own onboard generator. What that means too is that you got power anywhere. We're in the middle of nowhere with a tent. You could run an air conditioner in the back. Now this is just a quick photo shoot because it's not electric hybrid yet. All those parts are coming. But the whole point is, yeah, you can run your air conditioner in your tent. You can run a microwave. You can put your TV in there and watch football while you're camping off your truck. This is your generator for beside your house so that if there is ever a blackout, you have an onboard generator that can either heat your house, cool your house, keep your meat frozen, keep your ice cream cold, everything that you need with this setup. So we're very excited. This truck is exactly the way I envisioned it but now we're gonna tear the whole thing apart again. <laughs> so we finished our dyno testing, taking it to the shop, body's coming off again, frame is getting stripped down. We're gonna paint this thing Edison electric blue on the frame, once all the brackets and everything in there with the high voltage wiring. Eventually it's gonna have dual motor axles in the front and the back. We're hoping we can drive it like a skid steer. Lots of power, lots of torque, and very excited to be able to put these into production, and this is the prototype. So check out Edison, what we're doing there with the semi trucks, with the pickup truck conversions. This it doesn't take much to spruce up your second gen, well, like thousands of hours to get the body straight and paint, but the bumpers and the mirrors uh, do a lot for the outside of the truck. So all the links are down below, you can check them out. And that being said, you got to get out there and work on it yourself. If you're not filthy, you're not rich. See a dream, see a vision, take the steps, make the steps, make the plan to put it into reality, and you can do it too. Because if you're not filthy, you're not rich. There we go.